at lowest level. Lowest level can be any level at which we have reliable data. Lowest level can be either at retailer level or distributor level or at warehouse level, depending on the what reliable data company has. Now, what are my challenges? Challenges are data availability and what is the objective or demand forecast? Main objective is to reduce, minimize excess, excess inventory and to minimize loss days. So, what are the forecast methods? So, there are basically two methodologies. Uh, one is qualitative forecast and another is quantitative forecast. So, qualitative forecast is based on subjective data. So, it is the most, uh, I even say, least scientific. That is, we use uh, surveys and questionnaires to manage and consumers and then we, then we come up with the results. So, that is basically introduced when some new product is introduced. You do questionnaire and survey to predict its uh, forecast because we don't have any historical phase for that particular product. So, uh, methods are like market research, Delphi method, grass group method and then we have quantitative forecast. So, uh, quantitative forecast is the most scientific way when we, if we use uh, statistics and that is basically, uh, that is purely based on previous events. Either it is event or it is sales history. So, you have to uh, either uh, historical data also and then event information also. Event, what, what do I mean by events? So, events is uh, like, it's, uh, sorry, promotional event or you can say price revision or some natural calamity or disaster. So, in these events, sales either drop or it has So, these, you could have this historical event information in case if there is uh, event in future. So, you can forecast the demand correctly. So, again, there are two basic models for qualitative methods. One is time series model and other is casual model. So, time series model takes care of uh, trend, seasonality and random variation. Trend can be, uh, trend deficits growth or decay of a particular product. It can be, uh, sorry, linear or quadratic or any curves. Then there is seasonality. Seasonality can be quarterly or weekly or monthly. And then there is random variation that is noise, which is, which is present in every piece or every SQ routine combination. Uh, now what is casual model? Casual model is that your forecast is already depend on some other forecasted uh, product. So like your forecast is basically a function of demand of other products or some other variable, it can be GDP or anything. So that is mainly regression analysis. Uh, if this is one, one variable then this will be simple regression model. If there are more than one variable it will be a multiple regression model. Then there are two ways to forecast. There is top down, top down forecast and bottom up forecast. So what is bottom up forecast? Uh, we do bottom up forecast when we are at the lowest level, we do focus at the lowest level and then we sum it up at the higher level to come, with, come up with a result. And then there is top-down forecast where we forecast at the higher level and then we get disaggregated using proportion and then we come up with a result at the lower level. So which one is better? Top-down of forecast or uh, bottom of forecast? Anyone here? Okay. See, there is no some rule like which one is better, top down or bottom up. It all depends. Suppose if you are forecasting apples and oranges, both will have different behavior. So you cannot sum it up and you can forecast at higher level, they groups. Uh, why are you, whether, then there is, say, if you have some particular similar items, or even say similar location. Now I want to forecast for Delhi. So Delhi will have similar behavior. And uh, again, my distributed level data will not be that much continuous what level of, of uh, daily data I have continued. So, that is, uh, so it all depends on data. Anyone we can wait. Now, there is difference between demand forecasting and sales forecasting. So, what is demand forecasting? Demand forecasting is what is overall demand of the product in the market. And my sales forecasting is what my what a company is selling. So how do we do demand forecast? First of all, you need you need to have all the data, completed data, your data, and then you have you have you want to have that market share of your company. So, uh, say I am uh, forecasting for a toothpaste. So first I have to know total demand of the toothpaste in the daily market. 
and then I will, I will multiply it by market, my market share and then I will come with a demand for my house. But that requires sales data of all the companies. You, you need to have sales data for your competitors also. But in India, like we don't have POS data of our company only. So how do we get competitors data? So sales forecasting is more prevalent. Where you have your data, that's all. Now sales is not demand. Suppose you have a stock out, at that time demand is there but sales is zero. So in that case sales is less than demand. So the demand was there but you want to capture that demand. So this is the basic difference. But whereas in case of promotion, sales will be higher than demand. So these are our study boundaries. So we did research for these four companies. Uh, one is 1200 crore, consumer durable company is 500 SPUs and 32 reports. And uh, before we implemented the solution, total uh, accuracy is 60%. Then uh, we have 8,000 beverage company, it is a potent beverage. It is basically a beverage company, it is a market driven experience. That is having 1200 SKUs and 100 depots. And we have 100, more than 100,000 retail outlets. Now, in this business company, for some states we have data at retailer level also, because uh, government releases this data. Uh, there are corporation reports and there are uh, distributor market. So, corporation reports are done by government. So, they have all the data. So, companies collect. Uh, company has completed data also and their data also. Instead, they do sales forecasting research only. Uh, then, there is auto OEM and aftermarket. That is a 400 crore company. Uh, sorry, 750 crore company with 400 SKU and 30 depots. Uh, then, there is 500 crore SMPG company. So, all the organizations use some sort of uh, forecasting methodology prior to our solution. But there was uh, no economic processing in this, quality planning processing in this. So uh, our period was 2009 to 2013 and there was uh, growth between 2009 to 2011 and uh, recession uh, from 2011 to 2013. So all these uh, organizations are not forthcoming and disclosing their existing portal accuracy uh, before deploying our frame product. Data at the retail outlet level was available for only one organization as I told you before. That was a beverage company where it is released by government. And again, uh, they have like mature and visionary ad, but again, they don't have resources to execute the process. So even if I uh, even if they think of implementing a solution, they need people to run that solution. So first challenge we face in, in India is data availability. Uh, in developed nations, we have data POS level. But here we don't have data at even, even the distributor level, or it is not reliable. Although we got some reliable data at distributor level, data retailer is uh, like nothing. Uh, why do we say that uh, distributor level, uh, distributor level data is not reliable? It is mainly because of two reasons. The first is credit cycle, credit cycle of the distributor. Uh, by the time he realizes, he collects all his money, and then he places the order. It is already twenty of months. So he places the order on the 20th of the month and then he gets the Then there is other phenomena as push sales. What sales person have their own target. They have yearly target and monthly target. So they are push sales at the end of the month or end of the year. So that, at that time, the sales is skewed towards that. So if you see here in December, sales is skewed. Like demand is less and my sales is high. That is because in December, people, sales people have to complete their targets. So that's why they have still sold very high in December. But then in January, sales will go. So uh, coming up to quality planning. So all the organi we have seen that even very mature and big organizations have quality planning, but it is not in two words. Not all the three quarters come. And, uh, this is to a particular figure. Sales have their own figure and supplier chain has their own figure. So, the reason, uh, result is that, uh, that supply people run, run after sales people, sorry, sales people run after supply people to get their figures. Then, uh, then there is statistical forecast. Then there is statistical forecasting. What do they use for forecast? They just use the uh, last three months or six months average. And then they multiply it by the growth factor. If it is 10%, they multiply it by 1.1 or 20% 1.2. 
So if we just take to uh, the average of last three months or three, six months, in that case there is no seasonality, so they don't take care of any seasonality. So forecasting models. So there are like so many forecasting models. But in Indian scenario, the kind of data ex, uh, data and expert is available. We have seen that these so many models doesn't give very good results. So it is not prudent to fit all of those mo models, those fixed time series models, uh, to uh, put it in Indian scenario. Then the best practice is you have you do you have not you don't have to stick to much model for one location or one SK. What happens is they uh, the trend is changing. So you have to use a mix of methods and then you have to come up with a program. So then we have provided this approach, a look ahead approach, where we have already set up the process. Process will be CDFR, parameter planning and forecasting management. And then uh, we will provide critical infrastructure, technological infrastructure to capture treasury fields. At the present, there are no uh, like devices to capture treasury fields. We have their own e distributor models, like they have their own system. Someone is using Dali or someone is using XYZ. So we will give you one solution so that can capture uh, CSS treasury level. Then there is a planner on demand. Since uh, people don't have their own resources, uh, they, we, we provide planner on demand service. Well, we will implement our uh, own planner and he will forecast and he will do the plan plan. So, the, in all, like, we, we also provide uh, software as a service solution. In that, uh, companies don't have to own the product because it comes in presence in the Indian scenario. Uh, these companies, manufacturing companies, they put a uh, very less money on supply chain. So, 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 so the uh, uh, solution must be feasible to them. So, the process solution I will show you. There is a monthly planning, it can be easily or monthly planning, but the statistical program is generated based on the historical data collected. Then, uh, enterprise level consensus forecast is generated. Uh, then, again, uh, we generate the replenishment plan. And then quota is distributed with the management plan and executed also. And then there is technology solution. So we have been like by deploying the people process technology solution framework industry companies. There has been a dramatic improvement in the sales quota accuracy. We have seen improvement from 10 stack percent to 20%. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a very interesting presentation of forecasting. Uh, the standard, uh, and I want to discuss, I would request my colleague, Mrs. Swapnu Chaurav, to say a few words and then we will open the floor to questions. Uh, yeah. So, at least it was a good presentation in the way that you talked about the basics of forecasting. And the way you started was good, but probably where the discount I felt was the title that you said the forecasting in India yeah. and the presentation. So I felt there was a probably have not talked enough about the problems that are there in India. No, I really have talked about like there is a resource problem. Yeah, so probably should have talked about implementation that we have not uh, talked about. What do you? So the, the thing that we have talked about is general problems, right? So <coughs> uh, forecasting in India. So probably I expected you to talk more about the implementation angle of this. Uh, so probably that was missing. And one point where, I mean, I have heard it, I mean, repeating one three, four times in Casper, it's called the not Casper, so probably you have to be careful with that. So, yeah, so that's all I had. Okay. Uh, we, would now, we would now like to open the floor to questions. If anyone has any questions, we would be delighted. Forecasting, uh, wherein you take these rules that are from the companies, right? Yeah, right. Uh, I think there is a problem like they are only pure setup because uh, for a lot of the manufacturing companies or retailers, they have this habit of pushing the sales. Right, right, uh, right. Owing to the quarterly or. Uh, yeah, that's why I have told you, like, in this, that's why it is a skewed case towards the end of the month or towards the end of the year. Okay. And we don't have pure setup, that's what I was mentioning. 
that we don't have fewer data, we have distributed our data and that team can be liable because of these issues, because of push things. Okay, then you are considering the same data to forecast, uh, forecast the sales for yeah. the right? Yeah, because if it is a yearly phenomena, it will be anywhere, anywhere uh, captured in seasonality. Because I have seen in some companies that it is a yearly phenomena, people uh, push their sales towards December. So in this December there is spike in, uh, in January there is uh, stuff. So it is anywhere captured in seasonality and it is giving good results there. No, I think we got one more question. No, no, no. Uh, thank you very much.
minimum uh, minimum level maximum level so this level has to be minimized or optimized so this is the objective of the function minimize total lead time minimum uh, this is but it cannot be minimized at zero level it has to be certain mid one or some level will there Sir, uh, and this, uh, and the three-time analysis. What I uh, that is another data. Data is being inserted there. So in the dispersion, the total time, uh, this time takes varies from 235 days to 365 days to reach the pulses from Bangalore to India to the consumer. And out of that, this data and importer. They, they are having the maximum time. It varies from 30 days to 200 days, and their standard deviation and uh, standard deviation is very large, uh, very high. So they contribute to the maximum for the supply uh, total lead time in the supply chain. So and this this phenomenon can be explained with the, this coding or black. Because holding takes place because they are holding the material more than what is required. So that's why the price will go down. And sometimes if they keep their, uh, too much in their uh, go down, that may be uh, because of blood. But most of the time, it is in the ninth and figure, what I have uh, taken, so that is, it is showing that it is basically that kind of price is gone up. So people have tried to hold the material that time, and that's why. The prices have gone up. So, the discussion with the uh, dispersion maximum in the this, uh, two categories important trader, standard deviation uh, maximum for important trader, and collaboration is not there among the supply chain members. So, that's why this supply chain is not properly maintained and the cost is increasing and prices are ultimately going to the consumer. I thank you. I would now like to request uh, the discussion to Mr. Swapno Sauro to make a few uh, brief comments. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, uh, I didn't get chance to go through your paper, but but the presentation it was very solid paper and it's very informative also. So the, the three times that we talked about it's a great detail, so really uh, I think uh, we should be very thankful to you for bringing out this to us. Uh, just one question I had regarding this was that uh, you talked about coding and lead time. So, do you see any pattern like you talked about 30 to 200 days, right? So, lead time, yes. So, no, there is, it is 135 days to 365 days. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So, do you see any uh, relationship between the time and the holding and yes. prices? And it is there. It is because when they are specifically the trader. If they uh, when they are holding longer time, this can be benchmark uh, among the different supply chain. If they are above the mean or sigma, then the price will increase. Most of phenomena uh, what I have uh, taken the data to the nine ten. So these are data uh, uh, and they explain when they are going more than two sigma, then holding is taking. So I don't know the practicality of this, but probably you know. If there is, you see there is kind of lead time is increasing, then why don't we try to source those nine months, which is very close to us, and wait for the say, uh, first to come from Canada or some other part of the No, but uh, the, this Myanmar is uh, only that process is not available. Okay. That is available in Canada. Europe is available in Canada, Australia. Okay. So Myanmar is only black map place. So those things we cannot import from there. Thank you so much. Sir. You are started from the trader and the importer, which is the It would be really, if you can have access, it would be great work if you extend to the part one in Canada or wherever. That will cover the total production. The time I have taken, but the total supply because of the foreign data and those things are uh, not readily. I'm not it is just the contrary. Indian yes, data is much difficult to get. Uh, Canadian data you will get much more easily because there is an interest to service and local data. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
Well, uh, before uh, presenting you this particular uh, lecture, let me tell you briefly about the background of this research work. I am very uh, submitted my thesis. Yes, this is this, which is uh, entitled or measuring the performance of green supply chain for plastic manufacturing industry, where it is targeting plastic film manufacturing industry, which is of person as everybody is aware. And then, by discussion with my guide, he was always saying, many will say, your supply chain is a green supply chain. And I, you know, surveyed so many papers and then, you know, I uh, saw uh, some target uh, papers and then various papers from various journals. And then again I developed a model, some uh, model, LCFS model. And then uh, after that, uh, you know, I have presented those uh, figures and all those things. I don't think yeah, this is what, uh, typically what LCFS is saying, uh, man toxicity and then uh, eco-toxicity and all those things. Yeah, I am not convinced. Well, then you will say your supply chain is green. <coughs> then that uh, I develop a model of uh, this particular uh, green supply chain in fuzzy, and then typically weights uh, drawn from uh, fuzzy MP. Then model I developed and published. But this is what the pre attempts for developing that model because you say. Here yeah, performance measurements are indicators for what we will say and then standards for those indicators are coming from are coming from different arena of We will say ecology, we will say industrial ecology, we will say applied chemistry, we will say manufacturing, we will say economics, I will scope this paper for Sustainable manufacturing or sustainable green supply chain. Yeah, well, that is mine, not my topic. Okay. Uh, I am Professor uh, Sushil Professor Chandra Kurgate. I am representing Indian Naval Academy. Naval Academy is a premier institute for Indian Navy. And then my guide, Dr. Marathi S. Pawar. Uh, this will be the agenda for today's presentation. Uh, flow of presentation. And definitely at the end I will appreciate and uh, everybody will be appreciating that if you are, if this paper is there with you and if somebody is dealing with green supply chain management performance evaluation that it will probably say 4 months because I spent some 6 months to 8 months for just finding this uh, standards and indicators for measuring green supply chain performance. This is our introduction. As we know, environmental issues in business are making amicable changes in strategical as well as tactical platforms in shop floors or we will stay on the decision making rooms on the companies. Okay, for our time this thing, These are some of the issues what we generally face and what company want to address at our level, customer environmental pressure. It is there, definitely it is there and it will be prominent in coming days. Product differentiation, we see green supply chain adoption for leveraging product differentiation. It is an environmental cost, we want to reduce cost, product cost and then associated environmental uh, our environment, we are having hidden costs, environmental rules and regulations. It is, you know, becoming crunchy and crunchy. It is becoming, you know, stricter and stricter. So, this is what the background of this particular study.
So, first question is how do we measure green supply chain performance? These are some of the methods. And then you will see that basically uh, green supply chain performance measurement is a MCDM approach, multi criteria decision making approach. There are basically two approaches which you will find predominantly in the literature. One is uh, input batch, internal factors affecting green supply chain. Other one is input output, considering output as a input for the model and then modeling and then you are finding the green supply chain performance. So basically my attempt will be for second option, output batch. Output batch, uh, the output is something environmental inventory release from any uh, you say company, organization or uh, service, whatever you consider. Okay, the variable factors in this particular study is operational, economical and then environmental. And this is the methodology I applied 
reorganization of input and output variables, this is uh, deciding the units for analysis, selection of variables and variable analysis, then selection, development of measurement scale, and then study the suitability of measurement scale for each variable for print supply chain performance measurement. And uh, this whole procedure has applied uh, and uh, for regarding this one I have carried out the work in this particular fashion. First, recognition of input and output variables. So I have classified. then marine ecotoxicity, then terrestrial ecotoxicity, then groundwater ecotoxicity, and then photooxidant ozone formation. For environmental ecological pollution measures, I identified acidification and eutrophication or nitrification as a concept or indicator. For ecological alterations, I have found out I have perfect abiotic resources, depletion, climate change, stratospheric ozone depletion and then uh, land use. So based on all these indicators I have analyzed. Uh, similarly, I have found out the ideal standards, then standards for main toxicity, standards for ecotoxicity. So, uh, some standards I will show you. Uh, this is what some, some of the standards I have taken the and the standards will be more useful. For each indicator you will find standards like permissible exposure limit is one of the standards which you can model in your uh, modeling methodology. Then uh, some PF and HPHI values, benchmarking, SCP value, uh, some equivalent. <laughs> And then I uh, did case study on plastic film supply chain. For that one, I have taken out all the uh, environmental inventory release for uh, this plastic film supply chain. Then I have done a fish spoon diagram or this uh, cause and effect analysis. And then I mapped this uh, indicators. And then after finally, I have standardized or I have uh, proposed standards for this supply chain. This is what the literature review I have conducted for this plastic and supply chain. And then finally, I have narrowed down to the standard. Okay. Uh, I think that is, uh, I think that is uh, really useful. And uh, you know, as I, as I think about your paper, I think the key contribution of your paper has been to create standards for plastic for green supply chain performance measurements. And uh, you know, this is the mainstay of your work as I understand it. And that's a very important piece of work. As you as you very correctly mentioned that it could be of use for other researchers. Unfortunately we are very short of time because at four PM the next session starts. So we would not be able to take any questions. But I would like to thank you for you know for making the effort to make a presentation. And I'm sure that uh, in due course people may find your research useful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
five minutes for tea? Not more than five minutes for tea.